Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace a sky using Luminar Neo. Yesterday I did an introductory video on Luminar Neo and in that video I talked about everything that is good and everything that is bad about the application. If you haven't seen that video I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. Now I did mention that in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to replace the sky in Luminar Neo and we're going to work on this image. Now I did some editing on this image already. If I go over to the edits panel, you could see I did raw develop, erase. There were a couple little birds way off in the distance and I erased those. Add a little bit of structure, did some color adjustments and I sharpened it with the details panel and that's all I've done to this image so far. I'll show you a before after. I'll go down to this little eyeball and click on it. There's before and there's after. And there's before and there's after. Now, those of you that use Luminar AI know how to replace the sky already. It's pretty much the same process. We'll go to the tool, it's Sky AI. It's in the creative section. We'll open that up. And Luminar Neo comes with a number of skies that you could use. Simply go to sky selection and pick a sky. What you need to be careful of, though, is to make sure that the lighting of the scene matches the lighting of the sky. For example, in this scene, um, when I took the image, the sun was over my right shoulder, and I could tell that by looking at this post. See how the shadow is going off behind the post, or the stake to the left a little bit? That it's indicating the sun was over my right shoulder when I took this image. So I need to find a sky that matches. For example, a sunset won't look right uh, because the sun is in the wrong position. So simply go to the drop down, go to this drop down within the drop down, and you'll see that there's a number of different categories. Now, since this was just a midsummer day, um, you know, a blue sky is probably the best category. And just click on a sky and you'll see it replaces it. And you can see it does a very good job. The wires that are holding up the radio antenna are still showing through. The sky is being shown between the glass panes of the lighthouse. So it really does do a nice job. And we could adjust this from this point. And I'll show you how to do all of that. So you simply could click through the skies and see if there's one you like and if there is one that matches the scene. Now, one thing about this, all of us that purchase Luminar Neo are getting these skies. So there is a high probability that you're going to put a sky in an image and someone else is putting that same sky in their image. So you may want to do one of two things. And the main thing is go out and take your own sky images. Take as many sky images as you can, and you, once you do, you'll need to load those into Luminar Neo so you could use them. Another thing you could do is you could buy a third-party package of skies. Most of these packages have hundreds of skies in them, so you have a less chance of using a sky that someone else may use. Now, those of you that watch my videos know that I talk about Occudrone all, uh, skies all the time. I think they're the best. And the reason why I like them, first of all, they're high resolution skies. But secondly, uh, they're all unique. What I found with many of these sky packages is they're the same sky taken at different focal lengths. And maybe the cameras move to the left a little bit and then move to the right a little bit. So you're getting a lot of images that are the same sky. Occudrone skies are all unique. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. You could check them out. I also have a discount code if you choose to purchase them. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how to put OccuDrone Skies, at least one of their packages, into Luminar Neo. The same would hold true if you take your own sky images. Just put them all in a folder and then load them into Luminar Neo. And let's do this. Uh, what we'll do is go to this dropdown again, the one we just uh, were in right? 
And in that drop down, there's another drop down. Click on that and go down to Show Custom Skies. And when you do that, if you have a Mac, a Finder window will open up. If you have a PC, a File Explorer window will open up. All you need to do is drop your folder of skies into this Finder or File Explorer window. I'm going to minimize Luminar Neo for a second because I have OccuDrone's crystal blue skies on my desktop. I'm just simply going to drop them right into this Finder window and they're there. Close that down. I don't need it anymore. Go back to Luminar Neo and now if I open up skies, uh, the Sky AI tool again, it's going to add a second Sky AI tool to the mix. And I don't want to put a sky on top of a sky. You see, I already replaced the sky, right? So I'm going to go up to edits. Here's the sky I just used. I'm just going to reset it and then delete it. All right, so, so we're putting a sky over the original sky, not a sky over a sky over the original sky. Hope that made sense. So we're going to go back to the sky AI tool now. Go to this drop down. Go to the drop down within the drop down. And there they are, crystal blue skies. So it's really easy. And again, if you take your own sky images, just um, put them in a folder and then drop the folder into that Finder window or that File Explorer window if you're using a Windows computer. And bam, they're inside of Luminar Neo. Now just pick a sky. We just want to make sure the light matches as closely as possible. And this one's okay. And this one, yeah, yeah. Just keep going here until I find something. I kind of like this one. And the light matches. Um, you could see that this cloud is lit more to its right than its left. And that's the way the sun was when I took this image. So let's just go with this one. So now you could adjust this sky. Now if we go to the top tab, you see there's a number of different tabs within the sky tool. Go to sky orientation. Let's just pretend that the sun was over my left shoulder. This sky wouldn't match perfectly. Well, I could fix that. Just click flip and it will flip it horizontally so you could better match the sky to the scene by doing that. You also could uh, move the horizontal position. So if it's not like exactly where you want it, you could just push it around uh, in that horizontal um, position. This is actually moving up and down vertically. And this one, that's doing the same thing. There's a bug in the application. Uh, so look at that horizontal position, vertical position, horizontal position. Yeah, so something's, something's not right. But, you know, Luminar Neo was just released yesterday. And actually, some people have emailed me. They found a few bugs. And I am forwarding those um, reports of bugs to Skylum. So obviously, there's something a little bit askew here. Uh, but anyway, this horizontal position does move it left to right. And it's kind of like a, 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 on a swivel. See how it kind of zooms it in as you move it to the right and zooms it in as you move it to the left? So you could do that. You could also push it vertically. So we have that. So there's sky orientation. Um, so you could place it exactly where you want it. Now you could refine the mask. With global, if I move it to the right, you're, um, you're, you're keeping more of the new sky. And if I move it to left, you're kind of bringing out the, the, the new sky and bringing back some of the sky that was originally there. You can see how it kind of, and it's, it's affecting the mask around the objects. If you want to reset a slider to its default position, just double click on it. Right at its default position, it seemed to look fine. It had most of the wires looking good. You could close gaps. So if you move it, move this around, if you think that uh, like these wires aren't coming in real, real well, you could move this around. If it's not, you know, if it's taking out part of the flag or something, move the closed gaps around and that will help. Fixed details is a real mine, minute adjustment, really around fine edges, I found that one. So mask refinement will help you get it to fit in the scene a little better. Below that is scene relighting. Uh, this is if your sky is a little dark compared to the scene or vice versa. You could relight uh, everything so that it better matches. You can see as I move this to the right, how it's brightening up my original scene. 
And I think making it brighter does match uh, the sky a little better. Saturation, if the sky you replaced is more saturated than your scene, you can move that. If you have a human in the scene, you could relight the human there too, and it just makes it look better. Uh, below that is reflection, and I'll do a video in the future where I have um, still water where the sky would reflect in the water, and you could affect the uh, amount of the reflection in the water and how blurred it is with the, the slider below there. So we'll talk about that in a future video. And then sky adjustments. Um, Sometimes, um, let's say stuff in the background of the original image is blurry, and if you put a sky in there that is perfectly focused, it won't look right. So you could defocus your sky with that. You could add grain to it so it better matches the image that you took. Atmospheric haze. So you could just kind of add some haze, maybe get things to blend in a little better. Then sometimes the sky is warm and your scene is cool or vice versa. And you could affect this with this warmth slider. You could see it affects pretty much everything though. We move it to the right to make it warmer, left to make it cooler. And I think maybe just a touch cooler looks nice. And brightness, if I move it to the right, we're kind of making everything a little brighter. Move to the left, everything a little darker. So that's it. That's pretty much all you need to do about replacing the sky. Now one thing I want to um, kind of bring up and mention about Luminar Neo, which is unique to Luminar Neo, when you use any of these tools and you close it down, like I just closed the sky tool, if I open it up again, it's a new, new instance of that tool. So I could actually then, let's say, uh, do something ridiculous, put a new sky in there again, and if we go up to edit, you could see that I have two sky uh, tools in here, one on top of the other. That's why I mentioned before, I didn't want to uh, replace the sky on a sky that was replaced. I wanted to replace the sky uh, on an original sky. So to get rid of this one, I need to reset it first. And then when you do, there's a garbage can there, and then you could delete that one. So if you want to come in and re-edit your sky, you'll have to not open it up down here under tools, go to edits and open it up there. And there you'll have all your settings as you had them. Remember I moved horizontal position to the left a little bit. So you could come in and re-edit where you left off. That not only again holds true for the sky AI tool, it holds true for all the tools. So you need to get used to that uh, because when I first started using Luminar Neo, I did something where I added noise reduction. Um, and then after I added noise reduction, I did some other stuff. And then I thought to myself, well, I need to go and add more noise reduction. So I opened up the noise again and I saw that nothing was done. It was a, acting like I didn't do any noise reduction. That's because I was opening up a second instance of the tool. So I need to go to edits to go to my original noise reduction edit that I did and then re-edit it at that area, not in the tools area. So I hope that makes sense. It's just something that all of us are going to have to get used to doing uh, because it's different. Other apps don't do that. There is the advantage though that we could put more than one instance of the same tool on an image and sometimes we may want to do that. Um, so in future videos, I'm going to talk about masking, and this is where you may want more than one instance of a tool. For example, um, I could put a color tool and affect the color of the grass, but mask it so it's only doing the grass. Then do a second instance of the color tool that only affects the sky and mask it so it only affects the sky. Then I could put a third instance of the color tool that only affects the water, and I'll mask it so it only affects the water. So you could see the advantage of doing that um, with these different um, instances of the same tool using masking. And that's why you, um, that is a really good thing. Uh, at first blush, you may think that's ridiculous and this is difficult. Why would they do that? Well, that's why. And that's, you know, a, a pretty good feature in my opinion. So I'll talk about that more in the future, but really, it's kind of um, very easy to replace the sky, obviously. You just kind of click a couple times, move a couple sliders to get it to blend in properly. You could probably do a lot better job than I did here. 
Uh, but you'll get the idea that it's very easy to do with Luminar Neo. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. Mm -hmm.